Welcome back to the show. We got props all over the place. <laughs> we got stuff going down. How has the last few days been? We had a recap of the last show, and actually, as of late, we don't have a UFC. So we're going to come at you with some MMA info and shoot the breeze a little bit. Maybe give you some advice on how to take your lady out and don't even let her know it's not fight weekend. You just say... Don't tell her it's not fight weekend. Don't say that. Just say, mm, girl, let's just go to the beach. Let's go have some dinner on You're Saturday. more important to me than the fights tonight, babe. And then you do that because you're all building brownie points for UFC 223. And you know what? The next fight card, even though I'm not going to miss it, you're not going to miss it. But if you had to miss that one to get 223 to be left alone, I think two. UFC 223 is out of control. It's all I can think about. Agreed. Play. And we have cards before that where we're going to have to do a lot of research. Look, at, I look like I'm a, a stalker over here. <laughs> Looking at the ship. Looking you at should show, show the YouTubers. So if you haven't been listening to us on YouTube now that we're bringing video quality to you guys, uh, you can like and subscribe. Hit that little bell reminder. Or if you're just still podcasting with us. Super creepy. That was just my creepiest moment of the week. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bullet. Brought to you by Lesbo and the Bee. <laughs> Remember to subscribe on your podcast services. So, yeah, usually sometimes we call these shows and we don't know. We'll call them like Jambalaya or Tex Mex or this might just be some bullshit. We just might be bullshitting. Brett, a little bit well, UFC bullshitting. A little bit of free advice on how to get your love life, love life straight here at Lesbo and the Bee. <laughs> <laughs> Accentuating that bean. So, MMA stuff. We've had so much going as of late. We have up-and-comers getting fights with Ortega, uh, changing of the guard. The 26th division has been nonstop MMA, guys. There's young prospects coming in that are looking flashy as hell. We're getting rid of older dogs, and it's a really tumultuous time in the UFC right now. I got to just have a little shout-out to my girl, Leslie Smith. She's pushing hard. Yeah. For that UFC unionized contract. And even though she may have some flaws that John Finch himself is specifically against. I don't think that it's a bad thing what she's doing regardless. The attention for the need of regulation for these fighters to benefit much more. When I retweet all of the payouts and earned. And when you see a guy getting 12000 and 12 to win for being in a contender of the year fight of the night contender which means you're in a fucking dog fight and this is where i feel like people that don't have the common sense just of life don't understand they're like twenty four thousand for a fight i'd love that okay now it takes you three months to train for that fight you got to pay all your trainers you have to have all the food which is expensive and all the proper care that you might need afterward the massages the doctors the all the stuff now you get this amount that gets taxed you don't even get to bring home all that money so all in all if to me it is even if you make an okay living, let's say you're an American, you make thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars a year. In my opinion, if somebody's willing to get into the ring three times in that same year that I just go to my job or you go to your job, and not to take away importance, but actual, they might not be able to do their job at any one minute in that octagon. They'll never be able to do their job again. That has to be. There has to. They have to be financially, um, like. I don't know Safe what I'm looking for for it. They like uh, compensated. They have to be yeah. financially compensated for what their bodies have to go through. For and, the risk. Yes. And they have a team that they're paying to make and what the final product is. The military does it. When you go over to a hazardous place for your health, you get hazard pay. You can look that up. You get an extra couple of dollars. Same with these UFC fighters. They should be getting what they're paid on top of insurance or 401ks or universal health coverage for them for after their fight careers because any one of these minutes maybe it's not a brain injury it could be a finger though and you can never use that finger right again and it causes you pain we all think they're private contractors yet they treat them like employees it's bullshit but the number one bullshit thing if i'm an athlete and number i'm this, one bullshit. i know I'm, <laughs> this is number one bullshit if i'm an athlete and i'm paid to wear reebok on my clothes then Reebok better be paying me every fight, win or lose, and besides of the money the UFC is paying me, I am now Reebok sponsoring me. If I have to have that here and then out of the octagon, now I can't have any other shit on. That's how the new co contracts are getting tighter and tighter. Right, 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 right. We this, were going over it. This it's is crazy. crazy. 
monster. It's like even if they want to have like they keep their normal sponsors that they have. If those sponsors, if the UFC is allowed to litter their mat with sponsorship, the fighters should be able to do the same thing with the, their clothing. But right. I feel like most of the true fans, like I would say 85% feel this way. Yeah, I'd agree. So what do we got to do? Because we can't boycott the UFC because then they'll go away. And I don't want to see my UFC go away. Right. Even if they're getting fucked as fighters, I still am watching well, every single time. This is, I guess, our question to Leslie Smith. What can the fans do to help you guys out? What can we do more? I mean, just a podcast, but what can we actually do as fans? Could we write a letter? Who do we write it to? Where do we send it? Our we need more information. Right, or specific yeah, it's not our commission. Congressman. Yeah, it has to be a commission or a... It has to be the UFC. I feel like it's up to them for the fighter's pay. But it's still one of those things where I feel like if we still get 10,000 signatures, let's say, and go up to UFC, Dana White hand those over, he can be like, oh, nice signatures. I don't give a fuck. Like, he can eat, you know, they're a private company that does what they want and has been able to use legal statutes and proper wording to get the benefit most for themselves. They are an entity that's for profit. It's just crazy. Every other organization that works, I mean, if you take friggin' from Major League Baseball to Broadway, any other thing, when you get to the height and level and fame of some of these people... And if you look at the famous people that respect the shit out of these people, and the, fa- the if people really knew how little they were getting paid, it would be, I think people would be horrified. Once, what the bring mm-hmm. home is, if they boiled it down to a weekly bring home, you would be like, whoa, that's not fair. Sarah McMahon, let's say she's bringing home six twenty five dollars a week. Huh, do I think that's okay? That, not that it's not a good living, mm-hmm. but that this person, and I'm not even saying that's what she makes. I just use her as an example. I just thought of like a single mom taking care of her shit and like what she needs to get by and how much time she's away from her family to train. I don't know. Something has to be done. That's why we love you, Leslie Smith. That is why we love you. And Lappy Legion, if you have a better idea, throw it up on a comments board. Yeah, we're ready for a new name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're interested to see what other propositions are out there. Yeah. So, other... MMA stuff that's been going on. We did have that fun ass fight card this last week. I have to tell you mine before we talk about okay. that. My okay, big okay. news that I thought was this is so girly. Mike Perry and his girlfriend broke up. Oh, I did see that. Very, very I it interesting. Was interesting. Yeah, what happened? So I saw her specific tweet or Instagram, whatever it was, that she really specifically believes in God. And Mike Perry has a wandering eye. And nothing physical had happened, but it's something they had talked about for a while. And what I wanted to ask you is we were saying not long ago how the family and bringing everyone together for your fight camp and surrounding it around you and your loved ones benefits some of these fighters. But here's a situation where it might not have because if they had talked about this before and Mike Perry goes into Orlando with relationship issues in his corner, how's that not going to fuck with your head? I don't think every one should be necessarily in the corner. I think that has to be the good thing of a partner is that like if I'm training my spouse to be a fighter, I know what I bring to her and what I add to her emotional side, but I know I'm not the best striking coach in the world and I know I have no reason to open my mouth up in that five minutes in the corner because they have this team that she shouldn't have been saying anything to them. Like there is, but then you take somebody else's spouse and everyone will say she's a dumb woman, but then you take Sam Alvey's That's wife. That's exactly what I was going to bring up, same night. Who, um, she's actually student brilliant of the game. and if you student ever listen to her in the corner every single time he walks out of the corner you'll say I agree 100% with what 100% she told yep. she's really good with that corner info for a fighter and he sees her when he's there like I think that's a big part of it too is like sometimes the exhaustion sets in and everyone just becomes like a wah 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 Sam sees her and listens to her and that is a dream team but Mike Perry's girl I don't know I don't even know how long they were together beforehand I don't think it was that long. Yeah, I, I think, think it was, it was Mike Perry before and the girl. Mike Perry's about to go on a little bit of a nature walk, if you know what I'm He's saying. He's going to go sowing his wild oats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, he's a cute guy. That's what I'm saying. He, 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 he ain't hurting too bad. 
I was looking at them thinking, huh, what's she attracted to? Like, he's not great. I can't imagine sitting and having, a, like, a real conversation. Well, everyone said for initially was Gold Digger because he's about to get famous, and he ain't getting as famous now that he's losing fights, which is what I would think some people. But specifically in that tweet when she said um, she really believes in God, I feel my personal conspiracy theory is that she's way more religious than he is and he specifically was out talking about how he doesn't necessarily believe in god anymore are you thinking anymore. she's a virgin no not at all and they're waiting until marriage no I'm not at all <laughs> i'm just thinking that she believes in god and can he's... you imagine if my theory was with a woman that was like i want to be a celibate some people need to be the straight and narrow i can see how people well, get it but that mike perry's like oh i'm so he's just waiting i can't wait waiting. Yeah, for that waiting waiting for the bachelor where it's like when can we start having babies I know you got your boy <laughs> watching The Bachelor, <laughs> and then he dumps you for the other one after you've been sleeping with the brown-haired one. Of course, what guy wouldn't do that? What guy would not do that? Just throwing that out there. <laughs> <laughs> now back to the Speaking. Mike Perry. Mike Perry should be a bachelor. I would be yes. so into that. I'd, I'd, wouldn't I'd that be better it. UFC programming than looking for a fight? If we had like Mike Perry, Luke Rockholt. Like, a couple of these dudes do seasons of a Bachelorette-type show. I would be so... or And they can use some women. There are some single women in the I fight I love game. the contender and looking for a fighter. I'm well, a fan. And embedded. Give well, me all that shit. you know, but all the dudes, they have no problem with their ma male audience. They need more <laughs> woman viewership. Yeah, true. true so true, I don't true. think the women... Or they could do a, like, behind-the-scenes thing of Alan Joe and his cute wife. And they'd be like, oh, look at him. He's adorbs. Like, they watch The Real Housewives. They could watch The Real Housewives of UFC. They sent Chuck Liddell to Dancing with the Stars. Yeah, Chuck Liddell, no one cares about him. <laughs> that's, but that's where you were telling me specifically. You had a weekend with some gentlemen that knew what they were talking about UFC, and they brought up specifically... Chuck Liddell. They're I like, didn't say they knew what they were talking about. Or not, sorry. <laughs> they didn't know what they were talking about, but they tried to show their brass because I've by had this happen by saying, like, do you know of somebody named Chuck Liddell? I'm like, yeah, so does my grandma. Like, get the fuck yeah. out of here. Yeah. Get out of here. I'm telling you about tactics, and you're talking about, oh, do you know Randy Couture and Chuck Liddell? I was just telling you about some neon footwork, homie. Yeah, I knew Chuck Liddell <laughs> before I watched UFC. Like, there is a certain few fighters that I did know who they were, but it's not because... I care. They were just kind of... and the, They were probably from that era. Yeah, and even like the Tito Ortiz. I would have never known who Tito Ortiz was, but I knew who Jenna Jameson was. You know, it's like that kind of thing. It's right. It's like some of it ble bled over. But I think there are some UFC dudes that like the Mike Perrys and the Luke Rockholtz that I know some house for owls that would get down on that. If there was that kind of show, yeah, they agreed. would be into it. They would be like, I didn't even know this was in here. I thought it was all a bunch of Chuck Liddell's. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know this was an option. And then they could also, I think what people would be like, huh, show a cutesy couple few pictures of Amanda Nunes, build her up that way for people that don't know it at all. Just show her hanging out at home with Nina, show that whole life. And then the second half of the show, show them fighting where it's like, Oh my gosh, I had no idea these two women playing with their dogs in the park were murderers. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Right. I just, there's there's ways still to make the sport still grow. And I think there's intriguing backstories. I oh, mean, all everybody. the fighters. Yeah. Every it's single so person. Good. I almost think there should be a show that just highlights one fighter at a time and really gets in deep. Get Profiles. in deep with Lesbo and the Bee. <laughs> We'll go in over you if you need to. No, I have this dream I'm visioning, and I don't care if someone might steal it from me, but then I'll just go to it. I have this dream that our calling one day will be the Lat B Lesbo in the Bean cruise, where it's almost like a Comic Con, but it's just UFC fighters on a cruise boat for a week geeking out about UFC. Fans or actual fighters? Both. Both. Like, you Ooh, have to have I the just... actual fighters there for the fans. They are fighters. And you lock up a bunch of gorillas in a cage together, what's going to happen? Or on a boat, well, what's going to happen? A, do a whole ton. It's the same as, like, I don't know if you've ever even heard. They have, like, 80s ladies cruises that go out of Florida. And they'll do, like, Pat Benatar. See, and this is where we get in deep because we do the 80s ladies 80s yes. with the fight because you need a supply. No, you need a supply and demand. No, but I think that <laughs> you, you bring, you gotta bring fights, the beef. I, oh, you got to have some... Theme. Way to sell it to the fighters. I think the way you sell it to your ladies is by saying, honey, do you want to go on a cruise? <laughs> and they're like, oh my God, you're amazing, sure. And you're like, what are the chances this is the cruise we picked? You don't, you don't even tell her it's UFC cruise, so you're walking up and there's a big banner on the side of the boat. 
I just think it's a good idea. Like, they have Comic-Cons yep. for everything now. You can go to a Pony-Con. But can... that's where Reebok and UFC has limited to the fight. We back so all that There's so many fighters now. There's so many fighters now that are... And they can go make appearances anywhere. They can make... They're allowed to make public appearances. True. They might true, just true. have to wear Reebok bathing suits when they're on the <laughs> <boat>. Onesies. <laughs> yeah. But it's my... I think that would be so odd. And a band would also be super cool. You have a band included and... Have you ever seen those where they have like shtick cruises that go out of place? They have the new kids I, on the block cruise. I can't say that I have, but new... I'm a new local Floridian, oh, yeah. so I'm still learning. Floridians are cruising motherfuckers. It's true. It's true. They get it down on them cruises. What else is going on? The UFC. other he we've been supporting your boy Coco, who won an Oscar. I mean Coco Diaz, who was oh. should have won an Oscar for that joke because it was tremendous. It was tremendous. Like. Now Joe and B Shop has been saying, "Oh, this and that." Joey, Wait, what was the joke? The joke was, uh, "I bet who's who." You Mackenzie know it better. Dern. Mackenzie Dern's. Um, she was in the ring, and pretty much Joey Diaz said something like, "Tweeted." I, yeah, tweeted out. I can't wait to, or I wish I could smell her asshole after she gets done with this fight. Something to that extent. I bet it smells tremendous. I bet it smells tremendous. There's no. Um, Magalas, what's the fighter's name? Magalath, Magalays. Magalays. Yeah, he tweeted, "I bet it smells tremendous. I would lick it." Oh. Or something. It was. A, he like took it over the next. <laughs> because month. of course, it's but the internet. Nonetheless, I just if you don't know Joey Coco Diaz, you don't get it. But fuck off! I'm so tired of this. Like, for sport, we're gonna be offended. We have nothing else to do, so we're gonna exercise it. How offended we are about everything, and we're offended. For people who aren't actually offended. You ask the actual person, are you offended by this? No, it made me laugh. And we're offended for them. Right. We can't be offended unless the person themselves is offended. <laughs> it's sort of a backhanded compliment. And some people take it better than others, but I totally agree. It's like drinking someone's bath water. Don't and you feel like it's of the same vein? Like, how girl, awkward. I would drink your bath water. Uh, Mackenzie didn't have to say anything, but now people have blown it up to so such a uh, next level thing that now she's going to be questioned by interviews and now it's going to be more awkward than it ever could have been where a comedian just said funny shit and people moved on. People just were like, oh, that was funny. We need more funny shit in the world, everyone. Agreed. And could, Joey, if you haven't seen his stand-up comedy, he's a slayer. And if you're a UFC fan, he will be on March 13th oh. on Joe Rogan Experience with Yoel Romero. And so any of the language barrier, Uncle Joey is also Cuban, so he can, he'll can he pick it up. So I think there's going to be a lot of moments of like Yoel not getting something that Joe Rogan says, Coco explaining it with all the Cuban flair, and then Yoel getting loud AF. And Joe's going to have those earphones on, so he's going to be doing this the whole time. This is what I picture. Yoel, can you get a little farther away from that mic? Joey, will you speak into the mic? Joey, will you speak into the mic? <laughs> For me, prediction, Joey Diaz is going to be so fucking high because he gets smashed before those things. But this is always what happens with Joey Diaz interviews. <laughs> Joey, can you back up? Like, he gets close enough, but then you can hear everything him going breathing. On. Yeah, everything in his lungs coming up. And he's three sheets to the wind on that next Chiba Chew, four layers in, just asking fucking Yoel about Santa Maria and fucking all this crazy shit. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's going to be so don't much fun. Marijuana, but if they did, Uncle Joey does that amount. Like, he does the amount of marijuana that would kill an elephant. And he just makes it through. But I do, if you ever watch his podcast, super funny. He has Lee Syette, I think is the guy's name, that is his co-host on there. And he doesn't tell Lee what the milligrams are of things. He just needs them. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> and you asshole. see this freaking, well, he knows it. Joey's going to do something to, to him. Be he right. already knows it going That's in. Fun. And That's fun. That's what a fun job. And you see Lee, you... He looks like he is, like, the most old-school Mongolian. He is so high, and he's this Jewish guy, and he's like, yeah, and he still has to work all the boards, all the sound, all the other, and he gets by, and every once in a while, I'll ask a question to the guest in his eye, and they're, they'll, the guest will look at him in fear sometimes and be like, dude, are, you are okay? your eyes open? Are you okay? <laughs> it's so great, you guys. So check out Uncle Joey. He didn't mean any harm to Mackenzie Dern. He's not a dirty, creepy dude. He wouldn't even, he's not the type of dude even in a comedy. So there's no been no me-toos yet about Joey Diaz. I would say he's a dirty, creepy dude. 
<laughs> he isn't. He even all the girls in the club. They say he says stuff like Whitney Cummings. All but the he's feminists. a stand-up guy. They say he's a super stand-up guy. Yeah, I agree. And he says sometimes says stuff that you might normally not some let people get away with, but because you he's know he's a comedian. Well, and you you don't feel threatened at him by all, and he's not right. handsy, so they never it becomes funny. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I think that's really important when you're saying lewd stuff. You also can't be handsy. You can't be like a guy that actually gropes girls and says nasty stuff. How about just don't grope girls? I was about to say, so I can grope girls? Some, <laughs> some girls you can grope. Uh, some girls, I don't think that's good advice, especially be, this day It just has age. to be consensual. But some girls love to be groped. You just have to make it consensual. So you got to let them know first. You gotta like, let him know. I'm gonna touch that titty, girl. You okay well, if I touch that titty? Let me see your ID. Have her holding her ID. <laughs> Next to her. <laughs> yeah. And you take a picture. Yeah. While you're doing it. And you She'll have it. put your hand on her titty. Yep. And just with like that. her ID. Just like that open palm. Yeah. Just touching it with so the end of your fingertips. So you can see that it's your hand, right? Your signature on your hand. So everyone knows what's about to happen is consensual. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds fool- foolproof. Yeah. Foolproof. That's gonna work. So... He'll be like, this strange guy just came up to me on the street with his hand out and a signature on it. He said he heard it from some podcast. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. You heard it here first, probably just gentlemen. So, any other UFC stuff? There's been a couple fights broken, but... I want to let you, I had the, I feel like I took over the last couple little things we went over in this last Um, one. There is actually rumblings around, grumblings and rumblings. I don't think there's any truth to it yet, but I do think Ben Askren has a foothold in getting into the UFC. GSP, GSP has been talking about Ben Askren and how he wouldn't ever fight Ben Askren because that's too way hard of a fight and Ben Askren doesn't have a name. That's 100% truth. Yeah. It's 100% truth. That's why GSP came out and fought Bisbee because the name, the title, it was a winnable fight. GSP doesn't take sucker fights. They got too Bisbee good of a game Rockhold. plan. That looks like it's getting more solidified. Ooh, I just want Bisbee to step away and just be an analyst, sir. I don't you mind don't him having one more fight. And at I don't care if it's in London. Oh, I think it's supposed I, to be at they're 205. Tar- they're stock- uh, uh, mid- he- light heavyweight, 205 pounds and is what I mean. That's really the only fight I want. To see him do would be Luke Rockholt three. Yeah, they're one and one. It's easy, easy to see. And I actually am intrigued by it, where I couldn't tell you right off my head who I think would win, and that makes the fight intriguing to me. Which usually in a third round, you have an idea of like I say all day this person wins. I really recommend watching Bisping's UFC piece where it's called Destiny. I just watched it. It's a forty-five minute piece. They did really well. It's like the three sixty boxing kind of a situation, but. In that rock hold knockout, the last one that they had, their second fight, Bisping, all he practiced was that left hook the whole time. He talked about it before camp and after in this Destiny video. But here at Lab B, we're picking up on some shit because we said, if Bisping sees that left hook, Yo Romero sees that left hook and guess exactly the punch that was putting him yeah. down. Though, what I'm saying and have been saying with rock hold, it's that weight cut's been too hard. 205 might rejuvenate his chin dramatically. Dramatically. I, so. I actually really hope we get to see him up there. I, all these fighters that we're seeing these weak chins with, I just am like, just move up. Yep. Except Yancey, I want him to go back to 155. Oh, I don't know if he can make it. His body looks not cut to But he doesn't have the best chin, but especially at 155, he doesn't have the best chin. At 155, jabs were, were sitting him on but his I ass. But I even think Cyborg now, she's taking fights on short notice, making weight. I really do think the UFC nutritionists and having that be a, a super important part of your camp, which I do think a lot of fighters are implementing, um, maybe Yancey needs to do something like that and live his life actually as a smaller person, like it looks like Cyborg's doing. Which, talking about Cyborg... This the whole Amanda Nunes, the, them dropping the Amanda Nunes fight with Rocky Pennington to fight Cyborg is kind of pissing me off a little bit. It doesn't build Cyborg's leg, legacy at all, and I think it puts her in danger. And we can go in all into that in a minute. But everyone that's saying, "Oh, that's not fair," Amanda Nunes, another um, one thirty fiver that Cyborg's taking down. I've said it on this show tons of times. Amanda Nunes isn't a one thirty fiver anymore. She can barely make that weight. Barely. I believe that her and Cyborg probably walk around at 175 a piece. Woo! No way. That's huge. No, it's not that big. Really? 175 is not that big. I'm 175 pounds. 
Yeah, it's not that big. Those women are carrying muscle like you're carrying. Jeez. They're not carrying. I'm walking around at 168. I feel like, so what? Yeah. Six more. But I have no muscle. So imagine if I am cut, I'm going to be looking. My body looks more like yours. But these women, like Cyborg, we've even said she's walked around in the past at 190, 180. Amanda Noons. She, you can look really good as yeah. a woman. Yeah. Gabri Reese weighed o- almost 200 pounds at one point. She was a model. She's just six foot tall. Uh-huh. And these women aren't shorties. Like, Amanda Nunes is probably 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, yeah, true, and true, And so I feel like, and she wears those uh, boots, like lifts, some sort of heel. Mm-hmm. And so it makes her look even taller. So it doesn't, I think with muscle, ladies are, like, I think healthy looking women, you'd be surprised. Like, I think Ronda Rousey in... The WWE right now is probably walking around at 150. And she looks good to me. She looks like a healthy weight. She doesn't look chubby at all. I'm interested to see what Ronda Rousey's wrestling clothes are going to look like. Because we only see her in the jeans. And I haven't been watching so, WWE. I was about to say, you bring it up. But I am watching Ronda Rousey. I do watch her clips. Like when she... When they're on YouTube, you don't watch the actual shows. No. Or no, I mean uh, Twitter, when they're gift up no, and stuff. No, if it comes up on my thing, like you might be interested in Ronda Rousey body slamming stuff. Stephanie McMahon. I'm like, maybe I am interested in that. <laughs> Apparently, I am. Apparently, <laughs> I am. Maybe you do know me too well, YouTube. <laughs> so, How do you there's know? there's Ronda with the Dun Dunskis. It's I mean we know it's what it is what it is. Um, with the Kurt Angle angle, don't really care. I just UFC is so much fun for me that I don't need it. What storyline do you want? Real life storylines that are like. People coming out of nowhere, up and coming fighters, cocaine, car crashes. Uh, That's just John Bon Jones. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> Everything exactly. you said it was it, all John Bon Jones. It is John Bon Jones. Like, sorry. So we have that in the UFC. You just got to look a little bit more, and there's up and coming prospects that are gonna I, bring the heat. On Fighter and the Kid, they cracked me up actually yesterday, and they were talking about there's really, I don't, because there are kind of, a lot of podcasts I listen to, a lot of diehards. It's 50-50 about people wanting to see the Amanda Nunes fight, but everybody does understand that Cyborg fighting Amanda Nunes does not solidify her legacy. The fighters' fighters get it. And so they were like, really? I want, Brennan said to him, the next fight, Cyborg versus CM Punk. And he's like, you have to question in your head who's going to win that fight. There's no question. There's no question. That's what he said, too. There's, There's no, no question. question. It's cyborg all day. All day. All day. Easy. And Easy. It's what people think is like, well, oh, she has to get punched by a man. Like, she's probably been punched by a man. She only trains with men. I, I guarantee you she's been punched by a man. And probably I men that are stories. MMA fighters. Her, where she adopted her, her name, Cyborg, Christiana Cyborg, was from Cyborg, who got his head crushed in by MVP. They were married at a point in time. Tito Ortiz has a very... Specific story saying, first time I met Cyborg, walked into a gym. She was sparring with her husband, Cyborg, who was a pro at the time and scary, big striker. And he kicks her like he would kick anyone else in the side of her head. She eats the kick, but then walks off the mat, eats the shot, walks off the mat, cries, not because she was hurt, but because he threw a fucking head kick while they were just practicing, came back in, started fighting him, and fought her like a man, like put a peace on and then they went home together like cyborg is the truth just saying that's kind of what i feel like happened in this fight with kutsikaya is that at first it started where she was like in there doing her thing and somewhere kutsikaya pissed her off and then we saw like a different cyborg but then the other thing people are saying there's huge holes in cyborg's game with those two takedowns and that amanda noons can exploit those holes if anyone can in the 135 division Everybody has holes. Everybody. It's just how you look at it. And the more fights you have, the easier it is to find your okay, holes. Okay, real MMA man fighters. Um, do you think Cyborg could legitimately be any 135ers? UFC pro 135ers? Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> different. That's a different his... game. That's, <laughs> That's a different game. <laughs> That's what he said. It cracked me up. I love you, Joey Benavidez. <laughs> but if Cyborg lands one clean shot, you go night night. <laughs> it cracked me up. Like out of everyone in the division, he saw Joey Benavidez. It's like that's harsh. Like, she might got your number, Joey B. <laughs> <laughs> I would say the chinier guys would be the only guy. B. Yeah, it's a different beast. Because she couldn't step up to the Dillashaw levels. 
No, hell I don't no. think so. I don't think so hell either. No. I don't think so either. And Demetrius Johnson. That's a hell of a pump fight, though. All those are happy. <laughs> I'm like, I'm down. Let me see so that. Anyways, Let me I see think the that. truth is that really we just want to see Cyborg. If it's not Megan Anderson at 145, let's give her some real competition, and I think she's down for it. Let's create a new battle of the sexes. And I think she's down. All this pro woman stuff. I think it could be a super watch fight. Girls would get behind it. Like, what? This lady's gonna fight a dude? People would be talking about it that never even talked about fighting. Or we can go all Habib style and have her fucking wrestle a bear. People have said Habib. Or like, yeah, I want to see Cyborg a... Habib. <laughs> you, you know who is that fight? No, you know who is that fight? I just think all of it's. I think that's such a crazy amount of respect. Agreed. And but Ronda was gonna knock out Mayweather. Remember that? Ronda was gonna yeah, knock yeah. him out. So it's I think not it's unheard of. Yeah, but people have been talking about. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> but but yeah, that, I, people gave real odds to that bullshit. But here's some some for real. Ronda and Floyd inside the octagon for three minutes. Who wins that fight? MMA rules. MMA rules. I think Ronda. I think Floyd Mayweather could use the footwork and stay out of everything. I think she could definitely get him, but this is what I know about Ronda now. She can't take that first punch to get in. Yeah, and he can land that and first punch. And he can punch, land a yeah. big, huge first punch that's harder than probably yeah. Amanda Nunes. And he ain't worried about hitting women. No, he don't even care. He don't give a shit. He's like, you're going to give me dollars? Cyborg versus Floyd Mayweather inside the octagon. Here, Floyd Mayweather's like, uh, so you're going to pay me a million dollars to hit a woman in the face? Last time I had to pay a hundred million dollars. Yeah, right? He's like, oh, this sounds like a <laughs> oh, good shit, plan. Let's do this. Round the Cyborg, whoever. Yeah, I'd see Cyborg versus Floyd Mayweather all day. And then the other option for Cyborg that I heard was kind of funny, a tag team match where she's alone. <laughs> I did hear that. That's funny. That's a good one. And anyone who's hating still on Cyborg with any of the issues she had about um, PEDs in her past, she's been tested as much as all the other athletes. And unless you want to start giving that shit to Holly Holm and Misha Tate and Kat Zingano, leave it off Cyborg. Leave it off Cyborg. Though, and I did hear this brought up that there's retention. The bone density is forever. The muscles develop. I believe stay. that. I believe that. I so. definitely. But you, we also talk about it, and I'm, I might get hate for this. You crazy as hell if you think Holly Holmes has not put something in her body. You crazy as hell. With that thoroughbred ass, oh girl. And that cro Magnum brow. <laughs> you crazy. You're telling me John Winkle John fighters have the You know who else? I was just looking at somebody else um, just recently where you can look at them when they first started fighting to now. And uh -huh. it was a woman and some dudes. I was just looking at old pictures of young fighters to now. And you see them all. And I do yep. think getting punched in the face does. Cal it make things thicker so sure. I do think that happens but we talk about it for Hollywood we talk about it for every other sport I hate to be Nate Diaz but I do think everybody's on motherfucking steroids everybody everybody is on steroids and I do think part of it the same way you're allowed to do like marijuana or whatever at a competition I do think there are PEDs you should be allowed to do at a competition to help your healing but that's an argument for another day. But I do, th I think there's benefits to it. Like, I was once totally anti it, and now the more I'm educated on it, I do think there's benefits for these fighters. It's never going to stop. Just because they're coming out with new tests just means that there's somebody else working to get around it. It's the yeah. way of the world. So it's going to be a lifelong thing. It's just like this war on terror. There ain't no end. There ain't no there's end. there's no such thing. It's exactly. like a war on drugs. Drugs, exactly. There's no such thing. It's just a way to pump money. If we money just put anyway. a blanket enemy yep. statement and then we can keep and pumping money toward it. Exactly. So, with steroids, interesting thing that I did feel like we were bringing up a little bit. Other people have also brought it up since the fact was Hernandez, who just beat Benil Dariush, was fucking jacked up to the gills. He'd never been tested one time. He was a short notice replacement about two weeks to ten days, somewhere around there. But he was never tested. If he was tested, I'm just saying that dude was jacked up. Young man, but he had level of muscle that was like, wow, bodybuilder style-esque muscle. Curtis Blades, Alistair Overeem, speaking of juice. Um, once if the juice is flowing but yeah. this is the other thing too it's like okay same to be said yeah it creates muscle density all that stuff <laughs> uh -huh. let's talk about Alistair Overeem let's talk about Belfort let's talk about all these guys where let's talk about Jose Aldo let's talk about Who life after this someone else just popped for standard Stone or something oh Canelo Alvarez yeah, Canelo against, Alvarez. Triple, against Triple G for the horse meat yeah 
Can I allow that? So it's like, let's, you know, all these dudes too, um, some of them look at Cyborg's career after, you know, they're, they're all testing clean now. None of these guys are standing up to what she's standing up to. So, right. you know. Right, or, right, right. Well, I wonder if there's ever been studies of sty- uh, steroids ruin your chin. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it yet. I've looked up some into it, and yeah, the the most shocking thing was the spiking of the hip joints. Never would have thought that. So any of them hip surgeries for young men, Jake Matthews. Um, just saying, get ready to lose some money after that guy pops. So with other. So you're going to get in trouble for Jake Matthews, and I'm going to get the whole Holly Home Preacher's daughter army after me. <laughs> she, maybe. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see uh, other fights. You got JW attached to your camp name. I'm just putting in my monocle. I'm putting in my monocle. I was thinking about it. We've kind of let the gym off the hook with this because our fighters haven't popped as much, but... Remember when TJ and Garbrandt were talking about who brought the steroids in and you're the one who got the team all on them? Um, um, just saying. Alpha Male is a sleeky... I know I'm throwing shade out of nowhere at Alpha Male, but I was the other day like, ooh, apparently a lot of guys there were doing it. But speaking of steroids, somebody who, for somehow, some reason whatsoever, has not popped and we're just waiting for it. We have a fight between Uriah Hall versus Borrachina himself um, and i don't know how fucking borrachina is not popping that dude I is don't, huge i just think he has a perfect person to talk about with the joe ban and the rock Holt and all these people who is and, better looking than borrachina that aye, juice aye, is flowing aye. that brazilian juice is flowing he is good looking companies so, out there you can get him for cheap right now he will sell your products uriah hall it's a very interesting fight. Uriah Hall doesn't, isn't taking any easy fights, win or lose. He's coming in against other strikers. I don't know if he doesn't like the grappling sense, but Chin's been tested a little bit, and Borachina blasts you in that first round. He's a, is Cardio's that the heavyweight division or 205? No, I think that's 185. 185? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm positive. Huh. I Middleweights. Believe you, I believe you. Middleweights. I just so. think Florentina is so big. That's, I thought he was like a heavyweight or a 205 or He's shredded too. So, any other topics we want to hit on in I this? What just are we going to call? touch it. Oh, uh uh-huh. How are you feeling about Khabib versus Ferguson? Am I the only person in America that feels confident about Tony? Because <laughs> that's how I feel. I don't think everyone I talk to. They all feel like Khabib's going to walk through this, and I am El Kakui right now all day. I have my hesitations on both fighters, more so one than the other. What? What are your hesitations? Good old wrestling. It's the, the, the you wrestling feel good about Khabib's chin? That's iffy. Um, I don't think it's ever been tested. And anytime we have seen A little him, bit iffy. In a Johnson hit him hurt. a little bit. He gets hurt a lot. So do a lot of other fighters. But that's where he has a great game plan of being able to get you to where he wants to get you. Have you? Do you think he's ever dealt with somebody like Tony on the ground? No. Uh, but that that's what also makes it so fun and why it's such a coin flip for don't me. Don't you think it's the ultimate test of BJJ versus wrestling? Don't you think this is the perfect almost like... Two specialty... Not necessarily BJJ because specifically 10th Planet has such a unique system and Tony Ferguson mixes it so well with... Because he does all sorts of crazy roles that BJJ doesn't show you. Like he does a lot of Granby's in wrestling as well. But I feel like it's... But he's a black belt at 10th Planet, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But he also... um, He's more of the MMA fighter where Khabib is a specialist. Striking his that guard is guard So is, that's Tony where it's so... A specialist. Right. Tony is a specialist in MMA. He's specialist off his back, but not necessarily in... I would say Tony's a specialist 